OK, so the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent, sine, cos, and tan, um, I would expect uh, you have been introduced to these before, but maybe you haven't seen exactly where they come from. Um, because they do look a trifle strange um, if you haven't really explored why they look the way that they do. Here is the unit circle. Okay, so this is a circle centered at the origin with radius 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just choose a point on the circle. Let's choose that one there. Okay, and let's draw a radius, okay, like so, and I'm going to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, like that, so that makes a right angle with the x-axis, okay. Now the key bit here is that that length, that of the hypotenuse, is just 1. So what we've got here is a right angle triangle with a hypotenuse of 1 and if I give this and say that that's the angle theta then the height of this triangle would be given by that being the opposite side so that sine of theta must be equal to O over H opposite over hypotenuse so opposite divided by 1 it will just be, well, opposite, OK? So this side length is given by sine theta. So the height of the triangle is given by sine of the angle. So if that angle is 25 degrees, say, then the height of the triangle is sine of 25 which is 0.4226, OK? So scale-wise, that's precisely what the height of the triangle would be, with that being the hypotenuse of 1. Now, this side would be the adjacent. So you could say that cos of theta is equal to the adjacent over 1, A over H. But H is just 1, so cos theta is just the adjacent of the triangle. And so the base of the triangle would be given by cos of the angle. So if theta again was 25 degrees, the base of the triangle would be 0 0.9063. OK? So it'd actually be further along, wouldn't it? OK? So this idea is that actually this triangle has sides of length 1, cos theta, and sine theta, OK? Now, if we just observe what's going to happen to sine as the angle of theta changes, then what we can do is we can plot the results, OK? So when theta is 0, so let's say that this is my angle theta, OK? Then uh, what are we going to have? Well, this is going to represent the height, effectively, of the triangle, OK? So when theta is 0, the height of the triangle will be 0, because that point, imagine that I can move that point around the circle, at that point, the height of the triangle will be zero. Okay. Now, as I move that point around the outside of the circle, I'm eventually going to reach 90 degrees, which will be this point up here. So at 90 degrees, oh, I won't do it with a cross. Just say at 90 degrees, we will have a height of the triangle which is at one. OK, so let's say that that is at 1. So now if I keep moving it around, OK, then now the triangle looks something like this. OK, a bit difficult to imagine it, but we keep moving it around. The angle 
that I have will come round to 180 degrees, and the height of the triangle will be at zero. So at 180 degrees, my triangle will be at zero again. Now if I continue to move that point around the circle, I'm going to get down to this point. I'll now be at 270 degrees. The height of the triangle will be minus 1. So at 270, I will be at minus 1. So let's say that's your minus 1. OK. And then keep moving that point around, and I'm going to get all the way to 360 degrees, all the way around, and my triangle will have height zero again. And so what this does is it actually traces out this shape. Oh. like so. And this is the sine curve. So as this point moves around again, we're going to go up to, um, what we're going to be at next, uh, 450, then down to 540, then to 630, okay, then to 720. It's going to keep on going around, and so this curve is going to keep on repeating the same uh, process each time and I could wind it back as well so I'd be going this way around as well so this curve goes on and on and on forever in both directions depending on which way around the circle I'm going okay so this is what the sine curve looks like and it's based on the changing height of that right angle triangle so if we did the same for cosine Okay, now cosine is the base of the triangle, so the width of the triangle. So when the angle is at zero, the width of the triangle is one. Okay, so there we are at one. Then when we get round to 90 degrees, the width of the triangle will be zero. When we get round to 180 degrees, the width of the triangle will be at minus 1. Okay? So at minus 1 for 180 degrees, which would be somewhere like there. Okay? Then round to 270, the width of the triangle will be back to 0 again. And then, round to 360, we'll be back to a width of 1. OK, so it traces out this curve. And here is the cosine curve. So this is what we would refer to as y equals sine of theta. And this is the curve y equals cos of theta. OK? Between 0 and 360. So then finally, we've got tan. Now, tan you can trace out in one of two different ways. OK? Now for tan, um, it, to visually look at it from the uh, diagram, what it actually represents is the height, so if I erase that a bit there, and if I draw this on,
So diagram wise, tan is represented actually by the height of this triangle. Okay. Um, and effectively, because you've got this um, constant adjacent of 1, okay, so um, you've got tan being this length, and so you can imagine the height of this triangle as the angle rotates around the circle. OK, as that point rotates around the circle and as the angle changes. Now, obviously, there's going to be a problem when this point hits 1 because that height will get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper as this point goes around the circle. You can kind of imagine it getting taller and taller and taller and taller and taller as it goes around the circle, and by the time it gets to 90 degrees, the height of that triangle is infinitely tall. Okay, So you can visualise it that way, or you can look at, it, look at it as using the trigonometric identity that tan is actually sine of the angle over cosine. Now, seeing as sine of theta is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, okay, then if tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, you can see that as opposite over hypotenuse. So dividing top and bottom by the hypotenuse as sine of theta over cos of theta. So tan must be sine over cos. And clearly there is going to be a problem when cos is zero. Okay. So as uh, the angle changes, so you can visualise uh, them in either way. As the angle changes, let's use um, this one, because it's quite nice to think about sine over cos. When we're at angle theta, uh, angle zero, we've got zero over one, which is just zero. So the tan curve must go through zero. When we're at 90 degrees, okay, now we've got one over zero. And clearly that's going to be a problem. So at 90 degrees, we actually have a vertical asymptote. Now, because sine is positive between 0 and 90, and cosine is positive between 0 and 90, you would have a positive over a positive, and so tan must be positive. So tan must, if it's going through 0 and approach that curve, must look like that remaining positive, so above the theta axis or x axis. Now, when you hit 180, you're going to have 0 over minus 1, which is just 0. OK. Now, between 90 and 180, you've got a positive number divided by a negative number, and so tan must be negative. And so the curve must approach the asymptote that way. For 270, we've got minus 1 divided by 0. So there must be another asymptote at 270. Now, sine is negative between 180 and 270. Cos is negative between 180 and 270. So negative divided by negative must be a positive. And so the curve must approach the asymptote in that direction. And then finally at 360 we've got 0 over 1 and so we must go through 0 um, at 360. And so the tan curve between 270 and 360 because you've got a negative divided by a positive must be negative. So that's what the tan curve must look like. Okay. So that's y equals tan of theta. 
OK, so now if we try and trace this using the diagram, using tan as being the height of this triangle effectively, what you've got to realise is that, remember that tan is opposite over adjacent, right? So if this is your angle theta, tan of this angle can be that side over the adjacent. Now, the adjacent of the triangle, because that is the radius of a circle of 1, you've got the adjacent as 1. So tan is just the opposite side of this larger triangle. OK? Now, as this point rotates round, OK, and we get round from 0 to 90 degrees, OK, at 0, um, the length of that side will be 0. This point moves around, and by the time it gets up to 90 degrees, we're going to be infinitely tall, OK? So tan of theta goes off to infinity when you hit 90 degrees, or it's undefined when it's 90 degrees. Now, when you go past the 90 degree mark, OK, we're still looking at the height of this triangle, OK? But... By the time you're looking at maybe a point over here, say, now your angle theta will now be this, okay? So we're uh, past the 90 degree mark. But the triangle that we're drawing is still looking at this length here. Okay, so this is your tan theta when you get to this point round here. So we're always looking at this side of the diagram. So when it rotates round, you can see that actually it's getting smaller, but we're negative at this point. So we're down at negative infinity when we're down there. And then moving around, OK, we're coming back to zero. When we get back to zero at 180 degrees. And then as the point moves round here, OK, then my line is moving tan higher and higher and higher again. OK, and I'm getting back round to 270. I've hit inf infinite height, effectively, all right? So I've got back round to 270. Then I'm going back round again. OK, so now my point's down here. And I'm going from negative infinity back round to zero. OK, so that's how you can trace out the curve using the unit circle. It's easier, I think, in some cases to use uh, the sine over cos root, the trig identity. But that is where sine, cos, and tan come from and how their graphs are built.